In late 2012, NOAA mapped some of this area and from the backscatter data uh, from the multi-beam, uh, saw what are column anomalies, and these have been identified as potential seeps or seep sources. So the goal of this dive is to really ground truth this area and determine the extent of the seepage. We would like to see aerial coverage, if possible, of any of this community, zonation of different organisms, if and what type of megafauna are associated with these seeps, and also look at a carbonate communities, if we see carbonate rocks, and um, potentially that are, are inhabited by corals communities as well. We are currently settling on the bottom, at 1135 meters depth. We are off the northeastern United States, off the coast of uh, Rhode Island, New York, New Jersey, and we're exploring a new area. This white um, is microbial activity or bacterial mats, and I was just wondering if you could just explain why we might see something like that here in the CP sediment. Basically, they're from the sediment environment, um, potentially methane. Um, there, there may be um, sulfur oxidizing bacteria that are um, also present on the sediment surface. But these mats can be early indications of potential chemical seepage. This looks, structure looks a little different to me. It looks very suspicious. It's very suspicious. It looks very suspicious. Point here is we might be seeing places along this slope where maybe we're more active or we're more active now, for example. Another question I would have for some of the biologists is whether um, we might be looking at predominance of sulfides in some part of the system instead of methane. Um, we haven't seen a lot of methane bubbles today. I think I got something on the sonar. Maybe. It's a little dot that kept recurring. It's right over here. Absolutely. That's cool. Holy moly. Thank you very, very much. Good eye. That is hydrate. Yep. Yeah. Right. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> okay. That's wonderful. Yeah. Um, Looks like we actually have some muscles, too. Yeah, I'm going to get an overview before uh, we pass out of the area. So, to the best of my knowledge, that's the first time that we've seen five Bacimodiolus muscles here on five. Sure, are we getting a good view uh, here of the extent of this muscle bed? Uh, you can see it pretty well in Sirius. Leaving a, a seep site that we were able to ground truth successfully in the site. Um, we had multi beam mapping from and water column backscatter data where we identified bubbles or, or water column anomalies, and we were able to come to the site using a remotely operated vehicle and ground truth this area. This has been a really exciting dive. We found gas hydrate, chemosynthetic communities, large beds of live Bathymodiolus mussels. Um, several species of fishes, and again, red crabs, which are commercially important fishery nonetheless. We are currently in an intercanyon area between Vetch and Shallop Canyons, and we are headed to a target depth of about 1468 meters. So we have detected um, water column anomalies or, or active uh, gas coming out of the seafloor and the water column data collected from multi-beam mapping. And so we are going to the site to ground truth uh, these plumes and hopefully find chemosynthetic communities. Oh, uh, here we're coming up on a huge patch of mussels. This is going to be one of the biggest patches of uh, mussels that we've seen so far. 
we're almost directly on top of what we had as a seat target based upon the multi-beam mapping that was done last night. We are off the northeastern U.S. coast, surveying the continental slope in an area known as the U.S. Canyons region. We found a large uh, muscle bed community. And this is the first time we're viewing this area on the seafloor in the deep sea. All right, we're getting a zoom in on, oh yeah, and you can see tons of bubbles coming off of uh, underneath that ledge. Excellent. There is hydrate under there. You see that little snow cone underneath of there, under that ledge? Oh, this is great video. This is really nice. I think this is, a, see, it's kind of more amorphous. It's, I think this is an icy coating. I think this is hydrate. Wait, the you see that bubble right there? This is awesome. I agree with you, Carolyn. This looks a lot icier than... Oh, that is awesome. Oh my gosh, this white stuff in the water column. Now this could be very significant. This may actually be hydrate forming in the water column. You see these white blebs coming off? Yeah. Yeah. That's very possible. We are well within the hydrate stability zone, and it's very possible that we're forming hydrate in the water column here as it comes off. This is about within eight meters of um, where we had the target identified based upon the multi-beam mapping. That's definitely good resolution. That's good. Yep. And we are at a depth of 418 meters, and um, we are viewing active venting from the seafloor. There's a great view of uh, some of the bubbles coming up in the Cirrus view. This looks like it's going to conclude our dive for today, uh, the 12th of July. Local time is 15.38. Our bottom depth is 14.13 meters. We've been along the continental slope off the northeastern U.S. coast, and we targeted a, a few uh, different sites that we mapped last night and confirmed water column anomalies. We landed down, and um, uh, patches of live mussels in a fairly large mussel bed. One of the bigger ones that we've, well, the biggest mussel bed that we've seen on this leg, anyways. Today we are looking uh, for deep sea coral communities and other benthic communities in the canyons region. As fishing is moving into deeper waters, as potential hydrocarbon uh, exploration and extraction, as well as mining activities move into deeper waters, it's really important to understand um, first and foremost where these coral communities are. And this is an important region here in the canyons. This coral, it looks like the, the polyps are retracted. Yeah, cup corals in the mix. Desmophyllum. We're gonna be looking not just for, you know, for where we found corals, but for, we do not see corals where we, where we don't expect to see them. And on the side, Coming up to the right, there's quite an extensive field of the uh, Clavularia as well. It's kind of a rare and <laughs> exciting thing for me as a, as a modeler to be able to develop a model that's, that's making predictions about where things should be and then to actually go test that, especially in the deep sea. Yes, that looks like a Paragorgia. Yeah, yeah. it looks like we have Paragorgia, bubblegum coral. Okay, I'm counting. So far we've uh, come across four different species of coral during this dive already and 
We've been on the bottom for about 20 minutes. It helps us to uh, synthesize all of the, the data that we have from observations uh, like this to build efforts and sort of generalize it um, to create maps that help us to develop, you know, develop better conservation tools, to improve management, and to target future exploration like we're, we're doing right now. So the calibration and validation, ground truthing uh, aspect is also an important and exciting thing uh, that we're doing today. We can't visit every, every location that a model might predict. There are deep sea coral communities, sponge communities. It gives us some way of, of giving inference on the connectivity um, between and am amongst canyons uh, that we're interested in knowing whether these canyons are actually isolating mechanisms uh, for, for benthic communities uh, is very important. You know, our, our lab here is, is, is interested in genetic connectivity uh, and issues of isolation in canyons, and those models really help us predict where to go uh, and look, but also um, can help us in modeling the genetics uh, and how things might be, canyons might be used as stepping stones uh, out onto seamounts or vice versa. The big thing that makes these models a useful tool is that it allows you to take what you know in terms of where corals have been observed and, and then take what you know about the environment there, the morphology of the seafloor, the substrate, hard bottom, sediment, the oceanography, the productivity of the overlying waters, and then <clears throat> use that to predict other locations that are like the places you've already observed. This is important not only to understand evolution in the deep sea, and, and corals are a really ideal, and faunal associates are a really ideal model system to understand uh, deep sea evolution, um, but also understanding connectivity patterns allows us to pinpoint where we might focus conservation efforts. So if there's a source of, um, of larval recruits to other areas, um, that's a really good place to target uh, conservation efforts.